Mr. Godfrey, Hello. how are you this morning? Oh, well, you know, um, I think I'm here to do a radio show of some kind. I heard you were here trying to uh, cop a free copy of the, uh, the They Call Me Baba Booey Oh, no, I already did. I already got one going. Yeah. Mission accomplished? Yeah, I stole one uh, from the party when I first walked in. So you don't need anything. Else. Yeah, and then I left. So what brings you back to that? Uh, a car. <laughs> yeah, see, you like that? You're looking for a vehicle. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's always something with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we can give you a cupcake and that's about it. Oh, damn it. Deal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert's got a book coming up. It's uh, Rubber Balls and Liquor. Rubber Balls and Liquor? Sounds like a Jackie type book. Yeah. What kind of a title is that? Hey, Gilbert. Yeah. <laughs> Gilbert looks a mess. He's got a shirt that looks like a dress. <laughs> hey, Gilbert. Gilbert, do you put thought into what you're going to wear on the air, or do you just wing it? Just... Yeah, in fact, whose shirt is that? Do you have an image? I was asking Billy Joel yesterday. Do you ever think about your image and what you should wear? Yeah. What, it finally hit you that I don't have a stylist? Well, I, I, I didn't know. I thought maybe this was intentional. Gilbert, uh, what, you know, the older you get, <laughs> okay. are you bored with comedy I get the sense that you've done it all. You've, you know, you've really been in it a long time since you were in high school. I mean, you used to run out of the house. You never went to college. You, you, college was yeah. stand up. Yeah. Do you get bored now? I mean, have you just kind of like said, "Fuck it, I don't care anymore." Well, I, I love when I get those interviews where people say, "But that excitement <laughs> when, <laughs> yeah. when you're performing." Was there ever an excitement to it, or was it just a way to make money? Yeah. Well, in the early years, there was no money, so I guess there was excitement. It, it, it gave yeah. you self-esteem. Yeah. Women noticed you. So yeah. You, th those were all the motivating factors. Yeah. Did you ever have a dream of making people laugh, though? Uh, no. No. You didn't care. <laughs> I've given up on that. Did people think you were a funny guy? in like real life when you were a kid growing did they always say oh he's the funny one i don't think so i see i don't think those guys who are the funny ones uh are the ones who go into comedy so much right and that, so class, you were not the funny yeah. one no no <laughs> the class clown isn't necessarily the guy who can I, get up on I, stage. I kind of feel like those there's those annoying guys who are the funniest guy at the office. Right. Who say, everyone says I should be a comedian. So, and those are the least funny. So who are the guys that become the good comedians? Are it the ones that were, were let's say, abused shy? their whole life? Shy? Like, yeah. they're all fucked in the head? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you're all three of those. You hit the yeah, trifecta. Yes. <laughs> Although, I kind of think nowadays, probably those guys who were the class clown, because ever since the comedy boom hit anybody everyone goes up yeah there. yeah do you find when you go to comedy clubs now and work do you sit around and watch the other comics no was there a time early on that you used to do that every yeah sometimes i'd watch the comics but boy now i can't why i i because i can't stand watching comedy why can't you stand watching comedy <laughs> did, did they not make you laugh uh they yeah well now it's like you sit there and go oh that's kind of clever that's smart uh you yeah, know it's You'd the best you could laugh I would imagine in the beginning stages, you would go watch the other comedians because you wanted to learn. You wanted to see what they did so that you could maybe pick up some tips or something, yeah, right? Yeah. Now, I, I go into clubs and the opening act says, oh, could you let me know what you think of my act? And I go, I never watched the other acts. But So people want you, now that you're uh, an elder statesman yeah. of comedy, <laughs> believe it or not, because you've lasted so yes. long in the business, yes. you are an elder statesman of comedy. That's, that's frightening. And some of the young comics come up to you and say, Gilbert, please, would you give me a hand? Would you, in a sense, mentor me? Oh, Watch yeah. my ass. Right. And you don't want to do yeah, that. Yeah, boy, they have the wrong person. But why do they have the wrong Wouldn't you like that role? Wouldn't you like to help a Like, Jerry Seinfeld is helping out Colin Quinn right now. He's producing his show on Broadway. And he's like, Colin Quinn's a kid. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to make it Not exactly the same thing. <laughs> but why not? Like, why not say to a guy, you you know what? Maybe you could improve here or there. You just don't want anything to do no, with them. No, I'll, I'll feel, I'll uh, pat myself on the back if I say to a younger comic, well, good luck. 
Right. Yeah, that, that makes That's me about fe- as much yeah. help as you want to give. <laughs> Why that do makes you, me feel like I'm an elder statesman. Don't you think there's something damaged? I mean, I'm being serious. Don't you think there's something damaged inside of you that you don't want to do that, that you don't want to have that satisfaction of maybe being... Mentoring someone who's yeah. wonderful or... Do you think that's because you didn't have a good father figure? You don't, want to be, you don't want to give that to anybody else? You don't want to end up being some guy's father? Is that what it is? I feel like I'm on with Dr. Drew. I know, yes. but seriously. <laughs> yes. uh, no, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I guess I've just been selfish that way. Are you a selfish guy? Sure, why not? When you went out, on, I remember this famous story, when you went out on stage, that you were open for the Go-Go's. Oh, yes. And, and, <laughs> And by the way, I've always wanted to ask you this since we're on um, uh, satellite radio, because on terrestrial radio, you can never tell the story properly. When you were all opened up for the Go-Go's and they told you, listen, it's going to be all young teenage girls, preteen girls, do not go out there and say anything dirty. Yeah, they said it's little girls and their mothers are out there. And So you went out, you went out to do your act, you started to get booed because you were being, I guess, a little too dirty, and then you lost it, right? You went yeah. berserk. No, first I tried to work clean, and right. I wasn't getting any reaction. <laughs> <laughs> you were bombing. Then it started to get slightly risque, like a Johnny Carson slightly risque. Right. And then just out-and-out out cunt jokes. What were yeah. the, do you remember? And if you don't remember that's okay, but do you remember what you said to that audience that night of, of, of teenage girls? Well, do you remember the cunt jokes? Oh, God. Let's see. I, I, I mean, I don't, rem- I don't know if I remember each one. Do you remember any of the jokes? Yeah. That you, t- you do? What did you say? Well, uh... Oh, oh, I remember the most gross one I think I told was uh, what's, what's red and climbs up a woman's leg? A homesick, for, a homesick abortion. <laughs> yeah, so I think... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, right. and, oh, and from then on, it got worse. <laughs> then, what happens? You wow. lose it, Gilbert? Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, you I just said, I'm bombing here. This is not my crowd. This is not people. These are not people I should be talking yeah. to. And, <laughs> and fuck the promoter for saying that to me. Did you feel any sense of remorse or guilt by by infecting those young girls' minds with all that dirty, filthy uh, talk? No, no. And I remember then when I got home. Well, when I got off stage, no one was really looking or talking to me. <laughs> and you know, like they kind of turn their head, you know, like, like when you're like a witch in Salem. And and then when I got home, my agent called with the classic. Uh, well, first of all, everybody there loves you. That's uh, you know, they just adore you. They think you're wonderful, right. and that that means you're you're going. Yeah, you're a piece of shit. Yeah, that that's like when a you're on a date with a girl and she says, "Well, I think you're a great guy." That means you're not going to get laid. I yeah. think uh, what I think is remarkable about you, and I don't even know how you pull this off. And I'm not joking. This is remarkable. You're the guy. I mean, you'll come on here. You'll use the N word. Yeah. You'll you'll tell anti-Semitic jokes, yes, anti-black <laughs> jokes, anti-gay jokes. You'll you you are probably the filthiest comic I've ever heard. Yeah. And yet, in the same career. Disney thinks nothing of hiring you for cartoons. I don't know. Do they ever listen to your act? I mean, like, like do they know? You? I don't think Disney would ever hire me for a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm a scumbag. <laughs> but you, I mean, I don't even know how you pull off both things. You're the family. Like, like Gary's kids are thrilled you're on today because you're yeah. on every Disney cartoon. Oh well, Gary said to me just backstage. He said his son, you know, recognized my voice from all the cartoons, and he says uh, I know him. He comes on the show with me. And he goes, yeah, he comes on the show and says, cunt. (laughs) 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 Do do kids walk around and go, oh, I know who you are? Uh, Sometimes. Or sometimes their parents will go, oh, you know who this person is? In the cartoon, don't you, uh, in all the different cartoons you're in, isn't it always the same voice? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Do you ever change it? On one of the Cyber Chase cartoons. <laughs> yeah. You changed your you voice? You got a new voice? What is in Cyber Chase? What is Cyber Chase? I don't That's even know. On, no one's ever known. Yeah. It's been on for years on PBS. <laughs> right. And, and what an is your educational character? cartoon yet. And what is your character's name on uh, Cyber Chase? Uh, once again, a bird named Digit. Digit. It's always a bird. Yeah. Why is that? And, so, have you ty- been typecast as a bird? Yes. <laughs> and you're Digit. Affleck Duck. Uh, the Affleck the Duck. The parrot though. and Aladdin. You're 
people think the Affleck duck gig is easy, but you go in there each time and have to do new Affleck sounds. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. What you mean? You mean they can't just all you say is Affleck? I I think they know they're paying you, so they're gonna have you work regardless. So all you do is walk in and go Affleck. Yeah. And, and, it. and it's the funniest thing, because it's like, they'll go, make it more angry, and I'll go, Aflac. And then they'll go, make it kind of shy, and I'll go, Aflac. And I go, yeah, that's much better. Yeah. You'll stand there all day yes. rather than follow their direction. <laughs> yeah. But is that because you understand who Aflac Duck is and what's best for that character? Or are you just, like, lazy? Yeah, I'm like Meryl Streep. No, I, do, do, you won't do something you don't think is right. Like, yeah. Correct? You think the right sound is just to go, Aflac. Yeah. Right. How do you you get that angrier? Or how yes. do you get that? I mean, what do you do when someone gives you a direction like that? But is that all you ever say in that commercial? Aflac? Uh, no, no. The the hard parts is uh, they go, okay, now you're slammed into a wall. Right. Uh, now you're going down a drain. <laughs> now you're getting, uh, you're falling down a ditch. And what do you say? Yeah, you know, then it's a bunch of, ow, ooh, ah. That's ah. it. Yeah. Does that take all day? Yeah. Uh, yes. And then sometimes, well, now you're drowning in a pool, so I'll put, fill my mouth with water, and what, I'll go, wah, wah. What would it sound I like? I sound like Gary. <laughs> what would it well, sound like, like? Actually, like Artie. What would it sound like if, <laughs> you, you, when you do the Affleck duck drowning, you think of Artie, and that's how you get the voice? <laughs> no, I sound that way, like, <laughs> <laughs> Does he, um, by the way, have you been in touch with Artie to see how he is doing? Because I know you're concerned you about people. reached out, sure. Th this is, right. is funny. Two people, I figured, could just out of boredom. Right. I was backstage at The Tonight Show, and we're waiting around, and I'm really bored. So I figured, you know, I never called Artie or... Uh, <laughs> And I get, uh, or Greg Giraldo right. to say, get well. Right. So I called, so I figured, eh, you know what? I might as well do that. Right. And I called them both to say, get well. And neither, I just spoke to their managers. And then, like, 10 minutes later, someone comes up to me and goes, oh, Greg Giraldo just died. <laughs> and didn't you... I think he was shocked. And That's didn't you cool. immediately start tweeting jokes about Greg Giraldo's uh, death? Yeah, yeah. I you took some criticism for that, didn't uh, you? Yeah, I, I said... Uh, if Greg Geraldo is cremated, will that be the Greg Geraldo roast? Right. You, you tweeted that immediately. Yeah. And I said, good news. His family's clearing his apartment. And they'll be sending me a set of bath towels, Mark GG. You tweeted yeah. that? Yeah. Do you really think you should be tweeting? <laughs> well, Do you hesitate? Let, let, let me get into your mind for a yes. second. Do you... <laughs> Do you hesitate at all? Greg Giraldo, comedian, very tragic. He yes. died. You know, it was a, someone you knew. Someone you knew. You yes. worked with Greg, right? Oh yes, and all the roasts. And you admired yeah. him, right? Yeah. You know his background. He was a lawyer. He stopped being a lawyer. He was a Harvard lawyer and everything. Yeah. Had a family with children and all that. Do you hesitate for a second when no. you tweet? No. No. Is that right? No sense of like, is this right or wrong? And then TMZ picked it up and they did a contest, right? Saying uh, hilarious or horrible. And, and it how was. That would it work right right down the middle no kidding a few a hundred thousand voted and people and thought it was, it was 50 50 <laughs> <laughs> isn't that terrible you think people would condemn you for it yeah. even you would condemn yes. you for it <laughs> you voted what, against yourself what is it you have to be first with that tweet I oh mean, yeah is that yeah. it because that's the funny thing it's yeah, so that, inappropriate that's that it's what funny. happened with september 11th what happened there oh that's that's at the roast at the you have no roast where i said I have to leave early tonight. I got a flight to L.A. Uh, we, uh, I couldn't get a direct flight. We have to make a stop at the Empire State Building. <laughs> so you and so you said that? Yeah. Were you criticized for that? Oh, yeah. Now, well, the audience was hissing and booing. <laughs> and you like when they hiss and yeah, boo yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, I'm used to it. All right. right so, now. So, so the question is, the older you get, does it become more difficult to do that kind of stuff? Like, is it, is it, it, it to be the one who comes out with the first inappropriate joke? Is that a difficult role to play at this point in your life? Uh, well, I don't, like, try. I don't go, ooh, I got to come out with one. It just comes I started out. to sound like Joey Ross then. Ooh. Is it because you don't want to sound yeah. like the sappy comedian who goes, uh, you know, whenever a comedian dies, they turn to the other comedians and they go, well, what did you think? He was a wonderful man. He yeah, was he was a wonderful person. The reason there are so many people out there 
this funeral tonight, it just proves that people show up if you give them what they want. <laughs> so you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be the guy to go to for the nice quote. Yeah. You want to be the guy. Do you think in the, some the, way... Oh, the guy who says he's making them laugh in heaven. Or he's the reason we're all successful. Yes. This is <laughs> he's um, joined that great <laughs> band of comedians in the sky. Yes. <laughs> so, in other words, if I die tomorrow, yeah. I can't rely on you. Oh, God, I can't wait to, for the tweets. I can't rely... I'm going on Twitter when you die. I can't rely on you to be <laughs> sentimental about me at all. You won't come on there and say, you know, Howard was always a good guy to me. He had me... That won't happen. I'll, I have to I'll be prepared. Have to, I'll have to, like, rush right to... It what depends would you tweet? on how you die. Gilbert, you get the word that I'm dead. Yeah. I'm three I'm three minutes cold in the grave. <laughs> what do you tweet? Do you have that, any, do you have any idea what you would I say? See, I already feel myself panicking, going, ooh, ooh, ooh what, what, what do I say? What do I say? <laughs> <laughs> TMZ is going to be calling. This is your moment now. I've died. I'm buried, but my nose is still sticking out oh, of the ground. Oh, yes. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, well, see, that, that I can use. Oh, maybe you can say that. Yeah, yes. They buried Howard Stern, but his nose is still sticking yeah. out of the yeah, ground. Yeah, they saved on a tombstone. Yeah. You, could, you could even tweet, hey, I think I'm going to bring some extra uh, dirt to the funeral. They have to cover that nose. <laughs> maybe that's good. They're asking everybody to bring dirt. <laughs> so you're not a sentimental guy. Uh, no. That would, that would gross you out. That yeah. would turn you off. Do you always want to be in that role? Do you ever break down and get sentimental at all? Uh, only if it's about me. Right. Yeah. So even when Robin ran the marathon, you tweeted terrible things about Robin, right? <laughs> he tweeted about he me? He tweeted yes. about you. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? Do you know? Oh, oh I, I said uh, that Robin's running the marathon. Those people sure can run. Right. <laughs> Imagine if you handed her a basketball. I see. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the other one was... Uh, I have it in front of me. You oh, wrote, okay. Imagine how much faster she would have run if she had just held up a 7-Eleven. <laughs> That's what you said. Yes. Uh, can you imagine, Robin? Oh, my God. I had no right. idea. Yes. I so would have... Uh, it was all racist jokes. And by I the way... I would have loved to have known. What are you doing on Twitter? Because you're like the least technologically able guy oh, I, I know. I know enough to hit my fingers on the letters, like <laughs> one at a time. You do it. So you yeah. have... Do you have a cell phone now, someone told me? Yes. When did you get... This is your first cell phone, this right? This is... I've had it for about maybe two years now. Oh, you have had yeah. it two years. And how long have you been tweeting for? Ah, uh, oh, God. Yeah, also, I think about two years. And you're able to get on the internet now as well. Yeah. Wow. And you, use, and you just started using email, someone told me. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Is that true? Are you using email? Yeah, I can do email. Wow. Do you, what? what? I, I feel like a chimpanzee on it. Yeah. Well, it's a strange affect, you know? Oh, it, the Shudini commercial is maybe my favorite commercial on it's TV. It's real. Uh, yes. <laughs> I've seen, you, you'll do any commercial, right? Pretty much, as long yes. as they pay you. Yes. And Shudini, it, it's amazing to me. It's a product. It's a, it's product. a shoe <laughs> one that has a, a telescoping wand. It's, yes. it's people who don't. <laughs> I don't want to bend over to use their shoe horn. I can't, I can't. basically. Well, I mean, my they, God. They show in the commercial it's old people and they're falling over yeah. dramatically. <laughs> yeah. And they also show very fat people. Oh, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Fat people and old crippled people. Were you paid well for Shudini? <laughs> it was okay. It's unbelievable. And there's one big fat or old person well, after that's another. when I knew America was in trouble. Well. Yeah, dramatically <laughs> falling over. But do you have an agent that you ever discussed this with? Like, uh, you, is there no. a plan? No, no, my, my, my you don't, you don't have an agent. Yeah. yeah. There's no game plan, as Robin just said, right? There's just no... Like, like, like. to me, okay, now you're the voice of Aladdin. You're the voice of this other cartoon. You're the voice... And then someone says, Shudini. And you don't even, for a minute, go, no. that's beneath me. No. There's no thought to and, this And career. I came up with a line in the commercial, it's a shoehorn on a stick. <laughs> yeah. They must have appreciated it. <laughs> yes. That. Did oh, they he's thank you? with well, us. That's, yeah. yeah, yeah. That Gilbert Godfrey said, he works with us. It, it's like Johnny Depp, how he adds to a movie. <laughs> when, when you meet the Shudini people who represent the company, are they all people like in wheelchairs and stuff or, or like 900 pounds? No, it's, it's one of those companies that has all those products on the shelf. Right. Like, you know, like the spray on hair and stuff like that. And do you have a Shudini? I mean, do they give you one because uh, you yeah. are the spokesperson? Yes. Do you ever use it? Have you tried using Shudini? No, I have it in the package <laughs> somewhere. I wonder if I should get one. I was Maybe say, it's do good. you love the product? I got to tell you, I don't love bending over and putting my shoes on. <laughs> And I have one of those little pocket size electric razors. Oh, you have that yes. too. That's very nice. It's very, very good. You're doing very well. <laughs> yes. I'm so proud of you. So 
with the, do you hear from Greg Giraldo's family after you no, tweet? No, surprisingly. They haven't contacted you? No. Did you know Which him? Which I'm hurt. Did you know him well? I mean, did you ever have a personal conversation with Greg Giraldo? Not too much. You know, I'd see him like at jobs and we'd talk. So are there no comedians <laughs> that you can sit and say, you know, hey, how do you find the world of stand-up comedy? You know, how do you get along? How do you do the road? How, you, there's nobody... Uh, you, yeah, yeah, occasionally you get into a talk, but not too deep. There's no one you respect. The young comedians you don't want to talk to, they don't make you laugh, you can't stand them, yeah. and you don't want to help them. The comedians who are your contemporaries, I don't know, like, you know, Belzer and these yeah. guys, you can't stand them either, right? Yeah, it, it's, I kind of feel like in the business, it's like there's the people who are lower than you in the business right. who hate you because you're higher than them, right. and then there's the people who are higher than me, and I hate them because <laughs> they're being higher than you. Did but you who's think on your level? I would like to know who's on his level. Who's right there with you? Probably uh, Gallagher, too. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, maybe he's a little higher. I don't him know. and Yakov Shmirnov. <laughs> is Colin, Probably. Is Colin Quinn level. on your level? Would he, is he a guy you would uh, give respect to? Is he up, up here, or is he... Well, I, I I don't know if I'd give him respect, but I guess he's on. You've level. both done Saturday Night Live. Yes. You've both done, you know, television. You know, uh, would you say that he is a guy that is a peer, that one that that could s stay in a room with you and not be jealous of you, and you won't have to be jealous of him? Or no, I, I'm sure we'd both be secretly hating each other for whatever right. reason. Well, I even noticed with comedians, they're mean to each other. Like I know that Colin was at Gary's book signing. You were there. And uh, the book party, and Colin was like, look at Gilbert, he's eating every minute. He's eating. <laughs> Gilbert was the I'm only one. Gilbert. Gilbert went right over the buffet. Like, there wasn't even a buffet. Gilbert somehow made hors d'oeuvres into a meal. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I yeah. find where the waiters are coming out of with these trays. People think you're joking, but you're yeah. not. No, You no. have a mission when you get invited to a party to get a free meal. I, I immediately stake out. I go, oh, that's the door they're coming out of, and I stand there. You really love free food. Yeah. What are you I I did, you know, Gilbert did my uh, charity thing, yes. and the first question he asked right. was, where do I eat? Right. <laughs> it's a dinner? Where do I eat? But people think it's, it's a joke, because you really don't want to talk to anyone, you know? Oh, wait, Artie Lang wants to talk to you. Hold on. He's on the phone. Hey, Artie, what's up? This was completely out of line, man. Yeah, I mean, making jokes about you is ridiculous. You're really fucking pissing me off. You really are. Now, what do you say to that, Gilbert? Well, now I'm hurt. <laughs> you me off. I mean, I want you to call me on bullshit. You never call me this week, ever. I never got a fucking phone call from you. You fucking piece of shit. You know, uh... Piece of shit. Wow, I guess he's really angry. You're, all you do is laugh, though, right? Yes. Nothing touches you. Yes. You're saying stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, Artie? Go jerk off the Star Trek. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you piece of shit. All right. Okay. All right. Well, he's clear. I, I do jerk off to Star Trek. You know, that wasn't Artie, right? <laughs> oh, you didn't know. You, didn't, you don't care. Yeah. You did, Nothing bothers you, right? When people yell at you or scream at you and you know, yeah. that kind of thing. You, Only if it's about me. You, you know, get, yeah. Do you get passionate about your wife? Like, if she gets angry with you, do you get nervous or No, th then I just want to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Gary said he, so he ran into Gilbert's wife, of course, at this book party <laughs> or whatever it was. And he said, God, she's so beautiful. You, she's you so normal. You the whole time going, that's Gilbert's wife? Well, yeah. Gary said the only thing wrong with her is she's with Gilbert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she's hanging close to Gilbert. <laughs> and it's it's almost like, you know, what you think that Emily Smart girl yeah. must have gone through Gilbert. when she was captured by those people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Well, that's Good the, analogy. The Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> yes. When you look at that girl, Emily Smart, who was kidnapped, you go, what is she complaining about? Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, she seems in great shape. When you were a young man starting out, and like then things really started to happen for you, when did you start to feel like you were becoming a known, successful comic who would be able to make it in the business and be able to make a living? What was that point? Uh, I feel like I've gone through a bunch of those where I thought, okay, now I've made it. And then you realize, then you don't get work for a long time. What was the first thing that happened to you in your career where you felt like, now I've made it? Wow. Let's see. I, you know, the funny thing, I never felt that way about Saturday Night Live, and I was right. 
because they didn't they didn't use you. Yeah, really. yeah, and it was just the whole thing was just a complete disaster. Isn't that weird though? Because you would think most people say, "Now I'm on Saturday Night Live. I have a national forum. This is it." I wasn't thrilled to get on it, and then when really? I was on it, it was really awful. Who told you it. you'd gotten it? Like you didn't have to audition, did you? I did. Yeah, oh, you did. Yeah, I'm surprised because you were pretty well known at that point. Yeah, I auditioned a few times. What did you do in your audition for Saturday Night Live? I don't know. I do my act and then improvise stuff. And did you do some of your impressions? Oh yeah. Did they ever have you do Groucho on Saturday Night Live? Uh, no. God, no. I mean, to me, your three top impressions. Groucho, yeah. uh, I love Dracula. In fact, I just watched again Son of the Beach when you were on and you were uh, the, the Jewish lifeguard yes. and you turned into Dracula. It was like just heaven. And even your, your rabbi who sings, I mean, those three impressions alone could have been worked into some sort of regular bit, don't you think? I know they should have. But, but did you try to write bits for yourself? I once did. I don't think it ever got on and it was like but, I gave up. But Gilbert, did you understand that the whole thing with Saturday Night Live is the only way you get on oh, is you if you had write a your, fight to and, get and, on. And you yeah. had to write your own material. Oh, yeah. So maybe your problem was you sat around waiting for them to write oh, something Oh, yeah, for yeah. Did you ever say to them, because Jim Brewer was on, he said, you know, it's amazing. I started doing Joe Pesci for one of the interns. I didn't think anything of it. And then the writers heard it, and then they turned it into the Joe Pesci show and all this. Did you ever actively go to the writers and, and say... do oh, a Groucho imitation. Yeah, no, seriously. I should have. But, but of course, why? You're, you're so resistant, I feel, to, to, to collaboration. Even when you were at National Lampoon, you didn't collaborate. You did it no. on your own, right? And, and then after a while with Lampoon, I would just write photo funnies that would have my me with naked curls. I know, but yeah. why do you think you didn't at Saturday Night Live? Here's your big opportunity. Why didn't you sit down and write some material for yourself or sit with the writers and say, look at the variety of characters yeah. I could do. I mean, you're such a fucking talent. I don't understand why you didn't do that. Probably totally self-destructive. Is it? Yeah. Is that true? M more so than Hardy. Is it laziness, though? <laughs> I mean, are you just sort of like the lazy genius who just says, you know? Are you the kind of guy who sits around going, they should know how brilliant I am, and they should be working with me, and screw them, I'm not going to help <laughs> yeah, if they don't recognize me. In a sense, is there a chip on your shoulder? Like, I'm yes. not going to have to prove myself to them. Or I'm, I'm like Brando, who looks at the stain and with the business. No, but you kind of do. I mean, yeah. I mean, there was your opportunity... I remember when Billy Crystal was on, he just laid out every character oh, he could. Oh, yeah. See, he, see, Billy Crystal, but then also the season I was on was like, people hated the show before it even went on. Right. You weren't a Lorne Michaels guy. You were doing yeah, Gene Dominion. Yeah, and it was how dare they have a different cast. But you were on with some talented people. Weren't you on with Robert Downey Jr.? Uh, no, no. He showed up later. Uh, Eddie Murphy and Joe Piscopo and the other people you wouldn't even know. But those guys, certainly yeah. you could jam with them. I mean, yeah. Eddie does great impressions. So yes. do you. I, could, I don't think I remember ever you and Eddie in a sketch together doing any kind of impressions. No, in fact, they one time had me in a sketch <clears throat> to show what they thought of me on this show where it was, took place at a funeral and I was the corpse. <laughs> you lay uh, yeah. there and didn't get to do yeah. anything. Yeah, just in case you saw a hand or a foot. They oh needed someone in the God. coffin. And that was me. But I, you know what? I blame you in a way. And I'll tell yes. you why. Even when I did that dumb little show on Channel 9, I used to say to Gary, please get a hold of Gilbert and tell mm -hmm. him I want him to come on as Andrew Dice uh, Gottfried. Because I knew just that character alone would kill. And then you would go, ah, you know, I don't want to do that character. I said, tell Gilbert. It's brilliant. People are going to be cracking up. And sure enough, you came on, you did it against, you know, you didn't oh, want to yes. do it. And the gay comedian was on, and you start <laughs> in on him, and he's sweating, and it was an hysterical moment. But you don't, I don't understand why you don't, when you get that golden opportunity on Saturday Night Live, just take it and blow it up. Yeah. It's I, like you don't want to be the huge I, comedian. I remember, I was with that gay comic, and he's trying to tell a story, and he's sweating and like looking <laughs> like he's about to pass out. And, and you were his hero, and you were being Gilbert. And you were, you were really being Dice, rough. And, and you were being Dice Godfrey. He said something about his boyfriend farting at one point, and I said, Hey, what's that? A homo mating call. Oh. <laughs> and it was hysterical, and, and you were relentless, and you wouldn't let up. But if you had done that, like, like why didn't you walk I, I, into yeah. a room... Why, in God's name, don't you walk into the room at Saturday Night Live and go, Whoa, I'm Dice Godfrey. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> right, I do but, these impressions. But you're laughing at that. That's what you have to do to get on. Although, oh, that's what I was saying before. On one episode of Cyber Chase, the bird puts on a nose and glasses. Yeah. So I did the old Groucho voice for him. What did that sound like? <laughs> <laughs> What did you do? 
That sound, sounds like uh, a Leno interview. Oh, hmm. so, uh, I, I read in the paper somewhere. I don't know where I heard this. Uh, be, 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 be serious with me. Yes. I can't believe how you blow these opportunities. And I know you're not doing it on purpose. You don't think it's on purpose? I don't know what it is. I can't figure out why. Because I remember Gilbert had just done Aladdin. Yeah. Everybody loved (laughs) that movie. Yeah. You know, Robin Williams blowing up. Gilbert Godfrey's blowing up. They invite him. They had some kind of comedy award show or something that year. (sighs) And you came out and you were absolutely profane. Yes. (laughs) And totally blew all the goodwill that had been built up. You know, like he was banned and and articles are written how horrible he is. Are you like the kid? who gets on a baseball team or something. Yeah. And, and then maybe the baseball team's the wrong analogy. But in other words, the idea of sitting there and collaborating and pitching your ideas and being, you know, Billy Crystal in the room saying, I can do this, I can do that. It, or even being accepted. It, it, like, like, does it just feel like a, a, a desperate plea? To, like, you're not going to beg anyone to put you on. I, I mean, how are people supposed to know what's inside of you unless you give it to them in a writer's room? Maybe early on I felt that way. Now I feel like uh, I don't care. You know, just yeah. Because sometimes back in the days when I did the Channel Nine show, and I always wanted you on, I would say I want. I said to Gary privately, I want to shake Gilbert. I want to shake him because I believe his career would be so huge if he would do this, this, and this. And Gary would say, Well, why don't you say it to Gilbert? I go because Gilbert's so difficult. He and I don't <laughs> want to insult him. <laughs> But he's so fucking talented, and I I believe in your talents like probably more than you do. I feel I know what you need to do, but you don't care. See, you should have been my agent. I should have yeah. been. Yeah. Because I know... But, but how are you going to stop him from going out and telling the Uh-oh. inappropriate joke at the wrong place? <laughs> I don't how know. How are you going to stop that? I, well, listen, that's the problem. That's why I wanted to shake him. <laughs> well, I was going to shake him like a baby. You know, Robert uh, just reminded me yeah. when she was talking about that thing. I just remembered, yes. you know, Gilbert was... Um, had got invited to the Emmy Awards, which is a big right. deal for a comedian, right? They don't put a oh, lot of yes, guys out. Yeah. And what happened there? You told a bunch oh, of masturbation jokes uh, that they yeah, cut yeah. out and they banned right. you from Fox. Yeah. yeah, I did a whole Pee Wee Herman routine. But by the way, this, that's not even yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about. I understand that. Yeah. You, you did what you felt was your comedy. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. I went out on MTV and showed my ass and they told me not to. I yeah. get it. But by the same but. token, if this is a guy who's now being welcomed into the mainstream and all he has to do is go out there it's not fuck it up. Right. Yes. Yeah. And no. you'll get more and more work. Well, I did stop Kinnison from making him fool of, a fool of himself at the ground. Absolutely. Yeah, he was about to self-destruct, and I said, no, you're not allowed to go up and do that. And he listened to me. I don't know how that worked. But 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 it, with you, I just go back. Okay, so what was the moment you know, you in know, your career that you thought, this is a breakthrough moment, and my career is going to be skyrocketing. Oh, be- before I forget, because you mentioned Kennison, he came up to me after the Emmy Awards, where I got in so much trouble, yeah. and he was like laughing his ass off, <laughs> saying everybody was worried about me, and no one was worried about you. They were all saying, oh, how's Sam going to fuck us up now? Right. right. And he worked totally clean yeah, everything, right. and I-, I had the scandal of the night. <laughs> and I understand. Understand that. Believe me, I do. I'm the guy who goes yeah. up and does crazy shit. So, oh, yeah. I, so I get that. It's just I never, I never understand why on Saturday Night Live, particularly with you, I think that was the perfect forum for you because you do great impressions and you you have this like weird sense of zoning in on the very essence of Groucho or Georgie Jessel. If you, in my mind, in Saturday Night Live, if you had walked out in the Georgie Jessel general's costume, even if people didn't know who Georgie Jessel right. was. It would just be that character. It well, it be. was kind of like Billy Crystal doing Fernando Lamas. Right. right. No one knew Fernando Lamas, but they knew... So why didn't you connect with the writers on all that? I still don't understand it. What went wrong? Yeah, I don't understand either. Did and you I would lay, and I would, excuse me, for one, I, I would lay in bed every night after the, uh, an experience like that and getting fired from Saturday Night Live, and I would go... I should have done my Georgie Jessel for him. I should have done you, that's that. I but would be, this is what I'm asking. Did he ever talk to the writers? Did he sit in writing? No. Did he, yeah, I was just kind of fall, falling apart between me and them. What? And you don't know what that is about your personality. Yeah. That you, it, it, it's something rubs you the wrong way, but sitting there kissing their ass, so to speak. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, something. I don't know what it was. It's crazy. Yeah. So is it self-destructive? You think? Oh, oh, it has to be. Yeah. But you refuse to go to a psychiatrist and try and work that out. 
<laughs> that would make you. Do, that, you, do you go to a psychiatrist? You know, no. I think you're against collaboration of any kind. Like it, it would mean you had to rely on other people. And I think you like to think of yourself. As I an think that Gilbert thinks he's better than any of these other people. No, I don't think it's. I that. think he yeah. thinks he's more talented. Accurate? Maybe early on, I'd have both feelings going on, like I'm better or I'm totally worse. Now it's just... Uh, so maybe Robin's right. Yeah. You had disdain for some of the writers there and some yeah. of the creative process. And wouldn't you get jealous, though, when Eddie Murphy was going out there every week and doing all these whacked out characters and getting all this fame? Yeah, no, I just, uh, I always get bitter for anybody who's doing well. <laughs> did you did, did you think at this point in your life, at this age, that you would be further along in your career, that you would be way more famous? Oh, of course. You did? Yeah, yeah. Are you disappointed? Uh, no, like, um, somebody said, oh, actually it was uh, another person I do an imitation of. Who? That, no, of David Steinberg. You do David Steinberg? Yes. Now, that's really obscure. Yeah. That, that's yeah. what I love. That, that's, uh, <sighs> okay. He want oh, repute the allegations that the <laughs> literature of the Middle Ages was moribund. <laughs> So and there's he, another character. Yeah, Absolutely. he one time said to me, he said, uh, you know, Gilbert, always be warm. Never d get hot. If you get hot, you burn out. Just always stay warm. Guess what? He burned out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He got hot. Nice I, guy. He, he I talented love him. guy. I love him. He directed me in one or two like sitcoms. Right. That, he, he's a he's a pretty big director. I mean, yeah. he does commercials now and stuff too. And 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 I would like just follow him around the whole time. He start, he learned to hate me because yeah. he'd go okay in this scene, and then I'd yell out okay in this scene. What I want you to do? <laughs> you rub people the wrong way. Uh, yeah. You see, what I think you should do is more emotion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't like to collaborate. Robin might have hit it on the head today. Yeah, she yeah, said I that think that's it. you just you were not going to sit there and listen and, to those writers. And even the approval of the mm. masses is disgusting to yes. you. Yes. Yes. God love you. <laughs> but I do yes. love you. Yes. And I love your sense of like fuck everything. <laughs> I even my own life and my career. It's great. Um, well, anyway, listen, Gilbert, a uh, good friend of the show. He's here not for his health. He's here to tell you that he'll be at Caroline's on Broadway. Wow. Um, will you be here. doing your dirty jokes? Oh, I'll do those at the end. I usually look. My hands are shaking. Yeah, why are your hands shaking? I don't know. Maybe. I probably have Parkinson's. Do you think you do? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 Gilbert, Gilbert, wait a second. Are you, do your hands normally shake like they just did? No, I think, you know what? They're I, shaking right now. You know what? See, I'm drinking coffee, and I usually, I'm not a big coffee drinker. I drink one cup a day. When I drink one cup, my hands get all jittery, and then I get a lot of energy, and then I get, oh, I get depressed, too, with coffee afterwards. So you get, yeah, you crash. Yeah, yeah, it's like. Cocaine. It's like it'll bring you up and then you feel like I want to kill myself. But do you think it's good to drink anything that makes your hands shake that much? No, no. Have you ever been tested for Parkinson's disease? Uh, no, not is there, yet. Is there a history in your family of Parkinson's disease? Uh, no. No. All right. So no, you think you're safe. But, but uh, I, that... once, I once apologized to Michael J. Fox for making a Parkinson's joke and he said, you're right, let's shake. Uh, but, so, so, yeah. so oh, you, see, that's if he dies. Uh, no wonder they threw you up Saturday night. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, here, no. All right, go ahead. I, I, this is my. Oh, I gotta. This is some of my stuff to plug. Look at your hand shaking. Yes. Listen to me. <laughs> you want to know why I think your hand shaking? Yes. I think you were very open and honest today. Yeah. And I think it that got, got to, you. to him. It got to you a little bit. No, then I'd start getting choked up like I do on Oprah. Do you ever cry? No. When's the last time you cried? Ah, uh, gee, I don't know. Come on, yeah. you know. Yeah. Wow. You know, everyone, uh, the common one is to say, oh, when your child was born. You no, you, I don't think, no, I don't no. see you crying with your child. I, I no. think a death would upset you. Oh, uh, sure. Who died that made you cry? Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, Grandpa Grodfried? <laughs> You cried when Grandpa Lewis died? Yes. Uh, he was wonderful. All right, listen, we've been honest enough. Yes. It's too much for you, I can see. Your hands yes. are shaking. 
Uh, here, to pre oh, I have this plug. To pre order Gilbert's upcoming book, Rubber Balls and Liquor. Now, What's that about? Is that like a Jackie Martling type joke book? Uh, no, Are you no. Getting into it's, that it's, field? I've got stories in it, but nothing oh, okay. gets too deep, yeah. Uh, you, wait, this is not your life story. This no. isn't like they call me Baba Booey. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Where his brother had AIDS and his father died and his it, mother was crazy. It's none of that stuff. If, if uh, Gary uh, had written the book, not giving a shit and just wanted to go for a cheap laugh. Right. That's this book. Did you? I saw that you got a free copy of They Call Me Baba Booey yeah. at the book party. Yeah. Did you actually go home and read it? Were you curious to even thumb through it? I, I thumbed through like about three pages. I made sure to get a free book. I could, yeah. I could picture you getting through three pages and laughing hysterically. Yes. <laughs> because that would appeal to you in no way to sit there and reveal the details of your life, right? Oh, yeah. And based on what little I've seen of your family and what little you've opened up to me, especially when you were sick in the hospital, your life story would be way more fascinating than anybody yes. on the planet. But you will never reveal that, right? You will never go into your pain or your darkness. It's like I reveal some of my private life, but to such a, like, I gloss over it. In the book. Yeah, and go, go like I said, for an easy laugh each time. Why don't you sit down? Again, I'm going to be your agent yes. now. Maybe you'll listen to me. Sit down and write the real Gilbert Gottfried book. It would be Amazing. Oh, it would be really fascinating. I'll sit there and interview you. Have somebody transcribe it into a book because I guarantee if you opened up entirely, it would be the most fascinating and dark and depressing book of all time. You know, I think if I ever did that, like like if I did it with you instead of live at the actor's studio. Right. It might be okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, if you saw that guy doing it live at the actor's studio, you punch him in the head. Oh, yeah. Right, right. And um, then Problem Child came out. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, I bet Problem Child, you thought things were really going to break big, right? Oh, oh, yeah. No. Uh, uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2. That you was thought, major. You thought that was going to be a big yeah, moment. Yeah, every critic singled out my scene. And nothing yeah, happened. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your biggest disappointment? Oh, there had to be bigger ones. Oh, one of them. Yeah. Have you ever gotten to fuck a famous girl? No. What no. a shame. Yeah. You never, haven't? Never fucked anyone famous. Wow. Is that, yeah. is that kind of disappointing to you? Or anyone who resembled someone famous. Right. You would even like a Megan Fox lookalike. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I do remember that time we went to that penthouse party. Gilbert wound up getting thrown out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bothering the girl. Oh, oh, yeah. I, Did Tony, you ever pay for sex? Uh, no. Never went to a prostitute? No. I know you would. You'd be too yeah. cheap to do that. T Tony Curtis yeah. said in some interview of his career, he said, I fucked every actress in Hollywood, and the ones I didn't fuck, I fucked their stand-ins. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I swear to you, I was reading his New York Times obituary. It was like classic. He was some character. I, I see, more so than his movies, I loved him being interviewed. Yeah, yeah. because he talks to like old Hollywood, oh. and, 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 no, and there's no governor on him. He just goes. He talks about fucking Marilyn Monroe right. <laughs> and all that stuff. <laughs> Like I, don't, I don't even like I, I read his obituary in the New York Times and like Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter could barely like she came out with a nice statement but you could just tell she, her life must have been hell for oh, him. Oh yeah, yeah. I used to see him running around in Hollywood with a, a different young girl and he was already like eighty years old. Yeah, he was eighty. He'd be going out with some nineteen-year-old and so proud of his fucking right. I mean, totally, total, totally a Cro-Mangan. He, he, he had that great like toupee that you could spot from <laughs> two miles away, and, he didn't and yet care. it didn't matter. He didn't right. It looked great on him. It didn't fool him. Yeah. yeah, and yet it worked. It right. was part of his whole thing. You liked him. You liked old Hollywood. Oh, yeah. You yeah. love all those old guys. Yeah. Sammy. I actually saw live, and that's the key word, uh, Marty Allen. From uh, Allen and Ross. Yeah, yeah. On his own? Yeah, he works with his wife now. Oh, oh he doesn't work with Steve anymore? Yeah. Oh, no kidding. But, yeah. Was he but good? He, he was great. Yeah. I mean, I love that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Any of that old stuff you'll go see. Yeah. Do you, would you go see Don Rickles? Oh, yeah. You like yeah. him? And I saw Fiveish Finkel. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> The more wow. obscure, the better, right? Oh, yes. Five so Finkel, he's not helping the young comedians. He's helping the old comedians. Five Ish Finkel started in, like, Yiddish theater, right? Yes, oh yes. God. Can you speak Yiddish? <laughs> Saturday Night Live, annoying Jewish guy. Done. Yes. Sketch over. Why yeah. not? Why See, didn't that happen? 
happen. Had you been the writer or producer... Of course. Yeah. I, I knew how to use you. Yeah, I would have been like John Belushi, including the dead part. When you do that impression... Are you actually saying Hebrew words that you know, or is that just is just your impression of Hebrew uh, it's words? It's kind of my impression of Hebrew words. And does that represent your parents dragging you to temple every Saturday? Were your parents ultra orthodox? No, they weren't religious at any. They but we'd wind up going to temple when it would be like uh, for funerals or like somebody else's bar mitzvah. But when you would do when you do that, it reminds me of being a kid and being stuck for hours oh, yes. and listening to that shit yeah. over and over again. And it meant nothing, and you just sat there and just want to kill yourself. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Were you bar mitzvahed? Uh, no, no, no. He's not even circumcised. I yeah. blew him the other night. <laughs> well, there you go. Listen, uh, you are delightful as yes. always. Uh, your your book uh, not only deals with dirty joke. Uh, do you have a favorite dirty joke right now that you can share with us from the book? Oh, let's see. Is see, there... I'm, I'm trying. I don't repeat the jokes from the album right. onto the album. It's DVD. Right. Gilbert Gottfried, dirty <laughs> joke. I still say that. Uh, yes. Is there a, but there are dirty jokes in the book. Uh, yes. Uh, is there one that stands out? Okay. Oh. Uh, uh, one of my favorite that I just heard recently that right. has been you is... Uh, Oh, why does E.T. love Reese's Pieces? Why? Because that's what cum tastes like on his planet. <laughs> <laughs> you like that one? Yes. That one. Who would know that? I want to tell that to Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Did you tell that to Marty Allen? <laughs> <laughs> to pre-order Gilbert's upcoming book, Rubber Balls and Liquor, go to Amazon.com. And, of course, uh, Gilbert at Caroline's, he uh, doesn't like doing these live dates. Uh, <laughs> it's very rare. <laughs> it's very rare. Very it's rare. very rare uh, to get him out of the house. You know, he can make his money just doing commercials. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Shudini is looking for a sequel. <laughs> Gilbert, always good to see you. Yes. Oh, oh, and, and also on my website. Go ahead, yes. I, no, I made a short film. Really? That for a short video. It was like, you know, these cameras that you could press a button. No, and I like, like to camera. hear this. It does two seconds of a video. Yeah. And I for a while, I had it on Funny or Die, and my agent said, well, that's really cheap looking and not funny and everything <laughs> and i started to freak out and i took it off but right. it's it's called the scary monster are you do you play the scary monster yes it's like to me you know how like scorsese and people like that right and coppola will go this is a very personal film yes to me this is a personal <laughs> film you made a personal film and it's on your website yeah. right now called yeah. the scary monster. the scary because to me it's like uh me being this pathetic kid yes who always liked monster makeup and just found shit around the house to slap on their face. <laughs> Your hands are shaking like a leaf. They are. Do leaves shake, Robin? Uh, when they're about to fall off the tree, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gilbert's about to fall off the tree. My hands are about to fall off my wrists. <laughs> All right, Gilbert, everyone's had it with you. Okay. Uh, no, great seeing you again, and we look forward to you at Caroline's. I look forward to pre-ordering the book, which is Rubber Balls and Liquor. Go to Amazon.com. I'm glad you uh, put a movie on there. New content is always good on that website. I keep going on there, and I see the same guy. <laughs> and it's so thing. professional looking. Uh, thank you, Gilbert. Okay. And uh, once again, good seeing you. I know her from the radio. Oh, come here, shake your hands. Yes. Let's see, dude. What's going on with you, man? Yeah, it's when I drink a cup of coffee, I get all hyper and nervous, and then I start getting aggravated with everything, and then I get suicidal. That's what happened with Artie. It's a cycle. Yeah, he gave up drugs years ago, but he stopped off at a Starbucks and, and then tried to stab himself in the snore while eating a crawler. <laughs> Gilbert, much has been made about your tweeting skills. Yes, yes, thereof. they're brilliant. What will you uh, what will you say about this appearance when you get to a computer? Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, that I was on the show. This is the this is the first time I think that I've actually told people ahead of time that I'd be on Stern. For some reason, I usually uh, don't say anything beforehand. What about now? Now that it's after, it's just like, oh, now I could say yeah, I was on the show. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's dazzling. Thank you. Yes. For, thank you for sharing Thank you. I'm, I'm glad I could open up to you like this. Right. Yes. <laughs> Do something with those hands. Yes. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate your time. Thank you. Now go get those cupcakes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. that's right. Cupcakes are this way. Oh, well, where, where? There they are. Okay, wait. Come. Want me to get your bag? No, wait, wait a second. Wait, wait. Let me, let me just see. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and I didn't want that one. It looked coffee. Oh, are you doing this again? <laughs> Take one. Which one did you spit take, in? Take, take, take one. Which one did you spit it's in? It's okay. Take one. <laughs> what did he do? Did you shit on your fingers and touch them or something? <laughs> you wish. <laughs> See, even I forgot which one I Try spit that one. In. Oh, God. <laughs> Which other ones do you like? <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, this one looks. This one looks very good. <laughs> but don't you love the sprinkled kind too? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, wait, wait, wait. Hamantash and on. Okay. <laughs> Shoot a snot rocket on it. Yeah, let's just <laughs> smooth that over. Yes, there. Your hands are shaking. Yeah, yeah, but see, that's yeah. why you gotta be extra careful. Well, you love the sprinkled cup. <laughs> the sprinkle was your Don't be spitting on the cupcakes. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. What? Would I take a cupcake like this uh, uh, and go. <laughs> if, 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 you know, that's like a child would do that. I'm <laughs> You're disgusted, aren't you? <laughs> you just realized? What are these? Well, yeah, sir. What are these? I just, uh, I never like these. Yeah. Penny food. Okay. <laughs> well, this is hard to open. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Take one. Ah, oh, that looks delicious. <laughs> wow, smell that. <laughs> Smell it. Oh, I can't do it, Gilbert. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, he can't do it because he knows he ruined my fancy clothes. Exactly. <laughs> Another quality cupcake yes. with Gilbert Gottfried. Yes. Enjoy. <laughs> One more for the road? Why not? Did I do this one already? Nope. No? Oh, good, good. This one looks... <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, let's just make it round again. Good. <laughs> and bon appetit. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, oh, damn it. Can oh. you keep messing them up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you look hungry. What Always. Did you have, what did you have a <laughs> Salud. Gilbert was just out in the hallway spitting in the cupcakes because it pisses Lisa G off. Yeah, um, I saw him around the cupcakes, and they told me he was spitting, but I didn't know what was going on. And evidently, it's according to Doug, it's very funny because Lisa goes berserk. Really? Yeah. But, I mean, I feel bad because those are great cupcakes. <laughs> they were, look, oh, there he is. He's spitting on the cupcakes in front of Lisa. And he opens it and spits inside oh, and okay. then closes yeah, the top. <laughs> I didn't want that one. It looked coffee. Oh, are you doing this again? <laughs> you take one. one. Which one did you spit take, in? Take, take one. Which one did you spit it's in? It's okay. Take one. <laughs> Look at Lisa's. What did he do? Did you shit on your fingers and touch them or something? <laughs> you wish. <laughs> he is disgusting. That is wild. <laughs>
Uh. Doug will entertain that all day. What? Um, hey, Howard, Gilbert's on Line 19. What do you want? I got to tell you, he forgot to ask you something this morning. I don't think Gilbert has satellite radio, so I'm just going to let him talk to you. He said there was something he forgot to ask you this morning. Gilbert, you there? Yeah. Yes. Oh, what's Hello. up? What would you forget? Uh, well, like, like, like every asshole who has a book... Uh, I was supposed to ask you uh, if you would do a, either a forward. <laughs> All right, goodbye. <laughs> no, he's not kidding. He's not kidding. He doesn't know about the other stuff. No, Gilbert, I, I don't do forward. No. I love you, but I don't do it. Yeah, oh, that's fine. Please, uh, please you know, I, oh, my God. <laughs> you I know mean he's you kidding. You were supposed no, to not. ask that I, while I, you're in? Gil I, Gilbert, I, who told you to ask that? No, no, actually the publisher. Right, right. Look, no, because I said to them, I said... You know, I could ask, but there's no chance in hell. And Gilbert, listen say, to me. I just yeah. went through a thing <laughs> with, with Greg, with Greg uh, Fitzsimmons. He badgered me. This is so funny. I don't think you know about it. He badgered me for this fucking forward. I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> I wrote the goddamn thing, and I officially declared I'm out of the business. I hate it. Oh, I don't blame you. And believe me, I, I, I love you. But I don't want to write any of this stuff. I, I said to them, I said, look, I, I said I could ask, but... Oh, Gilbert's so really beautiful. No oh, this is breaking my heart. Oh, and you know him much better than you know Greg. I know. Oh, Gilbert, please. It's no sadder than any other part of my life. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right thank you, Gilbert. Okay, thank uh, the, you. Please, please never ask me for anything again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you know Gilbert. That takes so much for him to ask. I know. <laughs> I got the opening sentence for his forward. Gilbert is a cheap Jew. <laughs> and then we'll see where he goes from there. <laughs> I love Gilbert, but I am out of that business. And he didn't know. No, no. Yeah. He's just thinking I'm going to call and ask Howard to write my forward. Do you know how that broke my heart to say no? I can't say no to people. <sighs> I, it just broke my heart. That was so heartbreaking to me that Gilbert was on the phone asking me for something. And I said no. You it know, breaks... I couldn't imagine what he was going to say. Oh, it break, do you know now it's another fucking month in therapy just to get over that I said no? Because Gilbert reminds me of a damaged woman, and I can't say no to damaged women. <laughs> and that ain't going to get into why. Oh, dear. Oh, it breaks my heart. Oh, I feel, oh, I felt, that felt, that was the most that difficult like thing in that moment. Stab that's stab why, in your heart. That's why I had to look at you to get strength. Because <laughs> you have no problem saying no. <laughs> well, you can't do it. It's going to torture you. I don't want to do it, but it really was, it, that's difficult for me. 